Uh, welcome all to this interesting session on game-driven development. Uh, I, and I'm excited to hear from Arge on the topic, right? So, and over to you, Arge. Okay, hey guys, hi, uh, nice to meet you. I'm going to share my screen right now, okay? So, um, so today, guys, uh, today we are going to, I'm, with, I, I'm going to share with you, <clears throat> sorry, this talk, which is uh, continuous fun, uh, game driving development. Uh, game driving development or GDD is um, a framework that um, I designed it, you know, to help development teams um, to, you know, to use gamification, to mature and adapt new ways of working, right? Like a DevOps, like uh, some some software engineering practices through, through games, right? And actually also through technical agility. That's the idea of this framework. So as any as any other framework, you are going to see some steps, right? That, some recommendations that you can apply if you want to follow this kind of approach, right? Um, so just to, to make it simple, imagine that you are in your in your companies and you have a challenge, right? Uh, you need to adapt new ways of working, like uh, DevOps practices or cloud transformation or microservices or some agile testing practices, right? Whatever whatever new new ways of working. So uh, game driving development is a good option. So you can design some game so you can foster and you can engage and motivate people to, to uh, learn new, new stuff, you know, you know, new practices through this framework, you know? And as you know, right, in DevOps, we have, we have continuous deployment, continuous integration, continuous testing, continuous monitoring and so forth. So the idea is that game driving development is part of continuous fun, right? Which is the human part of, of DevOps. <laughs> So the, yeah, that's my talk about it. Uh, I'm going to share with you this presentation, um, which is a kind of um, um, foundation part of, of the framework. And then I'm going to move to the to the framework itself, which is a, a Miro, where you can see actually a Miro that you you can you are going to see the entire framework, right? With all the steps, and we are going to also play with the framework in some parts, okay? With uh, with an asset or a framework which is named the design. Uh, game design canvas. We are going to run, we are going to create a, a real game design using that canvas, okay? So that is the, the purpose of, of today. Okay, uh, my presentation, my name is Jorge Castro. Uh, I'm, I, I'm from Lima, Peru. I work as an IL coach, DevOps program manager and test manager. Those are my, my roles, uh, actually. Uh, I work for Entity Data uh, right now. Um, so I'm very happy to be here. Um, here you can see my contact information. Uh, please, please, please add me to your LinkedIn accounts. It would be awesome, you know, to have you in LinkedIn, um, you know, to try to share knowledge, you know, uh, have some discussions, uh, get in touch with you, that would be great. So I can learn from you and maybe I can share with you some ideas. If you like some, some, if you like some, some ideas in this talk, I would be very happy to share more knowledge with you, you know? So please add me to your LinkedIn accounts. Uh, that is that is my LinkedIn, so, so thank you. Okay, uh, I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to present this video, uh, just a kind of introduction to the topic. Uh, this video is about a real example of gamification in a serious business, right? As you know, uh, well, maybe if you, if you know, uh, serious business is a kind of, um, a, a kind of real problem, right? Real problem that we can have in, in our business, you know, in our companies, in our uh, enterprises and so forth. And also a serious business can be a problem that we can have in reality, right? Like a, like a traffic and so forth, right? In this video, you're going to see a real uh, example of gamification um, that uh, is related to improve um, you know, that, that, that um, the city pollution, you know, is about recycling, uh, recycling basically, right? Try to uh, improve the, the um, how we can recycle uh, bottles, you know, how we can take care of our, our, our city and so forth, right? It's about recycling. So I'm going to uh, share a video with you. It's, it's a short video, so please check it.
Okay, great, great. Uh, so I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, yes. So actually, uh, Tim, what you what you saw is is a, a kind of real example of gamification. Uh, you can see this um, bottle bottle uh, arcade game, right, where people can recycle uh, bottles, right. Uh, I'm using some gamification uh, approach and having fun, right. As you can see in the video, the people where they 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 were recycling, you know, the bottles. They were at the same time they were they were having fun, you know, doing that, right? Uh, the kids, you know, the the younger people and the adults as well. So that's the idea, right? Um, and some also, also also another message from the video is the the theory of fun, right? Fun can change behavior, and I think that is true, right? If I enjoy something, I want to change my behavior most probably, right? So that is a real powerful approach in gamification the theory of fun and how it, how it uses it to change behavior. And as you know, right, because as I said at the beginning, I work as an agile coach, and I suppose that some of you also work as an Scrum Master maybe, or agile coaches, or lead developers, or maybe DevOps engineers and so forth, right? And you know that as part of our job uh, is trying to change ways of working, right? <laughs> change some, or improve or change some engineering software practices, right? Uh, or also mindset or, or something like that. If you are going to apply Kanban or Scrum or Save or De De DevOps or uh, microservice transformation, any of them demand some kind of uh, behavior in our practices. So theor theory of fun is something useful for that, right? To change behaviors. So this is Yukai Cho. Yukai Cho is a kind of guru about gamification in the world. Um, uh, he's, uh, this is one of his quotes. Imagine a world where there is no longer a divide between what you have to do and what you want to do, right? That is the powerful of the power of gamification. And actually that is true, right? Um, I know that maybe some of you, when you go to work, maybe some of you enjoy what you are doing and some of you maybe maybe don't. Um, but the idea of gamification is also, it's also, that, it's also that, right? Try to improve our work, try to make our world, our work something great, right? Something that we, we enjoy, right? And I think that is a really powerful message. And that is why I love gamification. And that is why I, love, I use gamification for my DevOps, uh, uh, DevOps ob objective, my agile transformation uh, uh, projects and so forth, right? Okay, uh, another quote that is quite interesting is, and actually that is uh, uh, from, from Thomas Alva Edison, you know, uh, the, 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 invent, the inventor from, from US. Um, I th he, he said, I think work is the world's greatest fun, you know, because actually Thomas Edison did, he, he did really enjoy what, what he did, right? Invent a lot of things, right? Um, and I think it's about passion. It's about having fun while, while you are doing it. And actually that is why I designed this framework, right? Because uh, I think gamification or games can motivate people's passion, uh, having fun, and also um, change some practices, right? For the for the best. So so that's that's my approach, right? From today. Okay, uh, let's start with the story, right? I'm going to share with you a story. Once upon a time in a common enterprise. Okay, uh, imagine that, as I said right at the beginning, imagine that you are uh, an agile coach or a DevOps uh, manager or a kind of technical lead, something like that, right? So imagine that you are working in your enterprise and you have this challenge, right? The challenge is that, you know, you know, is improve flow and business through building agile DevOps and more collaborative ways of working at scale for distributed teams. So imagine that you are working in an enterprise, right? And this enterprise is, you know, is in the middle of a kind of agile transformation or a DevOps transformation or something like that, right? 
you need to adopt new ways of working. But besides that, imagine that you are working a kind of uh, distributed model. So you have you you have teams in Latin America, in US, in India, and so forth. Right? It's a it's a huge challenge, right? If you want to try to uh, uh, help to adopt these new behaviors, right, in a company, DevOps and Agile and so forth. It's a huge challenge. Uh, yeah, and actually this is a real experience. <laughs> okay, uh, so, um, okay, for this challenge, you can try experiments, right? To try to uh, uh, try to sort this problem out. So in our in our case, we try this, this first experiment, which, which was trainings, maturity practices, roadways, right? Roadmaps, right? Trainings are roadmaps, the classic thing, right? If you want to, people to learn about uh, continuous testing or continuous integration or Kanban or Scrum, okay? Train them, right? Give them trainings and also a roadmap to mature the practices, right? I think that is the traditional approach that we use right nowadays. Uh, in our case, uh, we noticed that our approach was independent efforts without collecting the dots. That, that was real actually in our first approach. And uh, as I said, we, look, we, do, we did a lot of trainings, some independent dojos, some caras, some coding events, a lot of hackathons and so forth, but we failed. <laughs> we failed, we didn't build ways of working as consistent as we look for. Actually, that, 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 is, that is true, that is, that is a real story. We failed um, because at the end we noticed that that was okay, you know, to do some kind of trainings and dojos and caras, but we need more than that, right? Especially for our context. We have hundreds of teams, distributed teams in different continents. We have a large enterprise and we need, we need more than that, right? We need, we need a kind of a strategy and try to make people really enjoy what we are doing, to buy the idea and really apply those new practices. So we tried, uh, well, actually we failed, but we learned, right? What we learned, we, we learned that we needed, we needed a system strategy. I think that is was something clear for us. Also, we learned that the best learning lessons were through games, right? Yes, we applied some, we applied some games approach in the first experiment, and those experiments was the best, right? When we introduced some games as part of the learning, as part of the experimentation, they were very useful in our teams. So games was a good option for us. So we need to improve that, right, that approach. And also we, we learned that we needed to sponsorship from our upper, upper managers, right? And I think that is something true. No matter, no matter what we are doing, right? <laughs> if you're going to do Agile, DevSecOps, or uh, Capital Formation or whatever, you need to sponsorship, right? You need some sponsorship from your managers. I think that is something quite important that we learned from, from that experience. Okay, uh, just a little video. Okay, we, I'm going to play this video again. It's a short video, only 20 seconds, but please check this video about uh, check this video uh, um, please ask ask yourself about what you can see in this video okay Okay. Okay. Um, well, basically, what you see, what you see, what you can see in this video, in the video, is you know, um, some some uh, some children playing, you know, football. You know, they are passing the ball. You know, using their heads. You know, one by one. You know, in a kind of process. And then the final, the final goal is to put the the ball. You know, in the basket, right? And, and that is the goal, right? That is why he he win, he score, right? Um, Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. I, I, I am reading your, your answers. Thank you for that. You know, that is what we noticed, guys. Actually, that behavior, right? That is collaboration, that's having fun, that's approach to, you know, to have one goal as a team, to share, to share, to share, to collaborate, to support each other, you know, to motivate people. That was what we observed in our first experiment when we applied games. So we say, hey, that is the that is the formula, right? That is the 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 the, the that, that is the, the approach, right? So that is why we try this second experiment, uh, which is this framework, basically a continuous fun approach, uh, game drama development framework, aka GDD, right? And also we we put this uh, name uh, saving the world, right? To try to make the world more fun for people. 
And yeah, so that is what we did in, in this second experiment. I'm going to move. Okay, so this is the framework, right? As I said, the, the framework GDD, a game driven development as any other framework in the market, I have some, the framework has some steps, some some uh, ways ways of working, you know, that you need to follow if you want to apply it. Uh, we have nine steps in the framework uh, to, and basically the, 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 main, the main, as I said, right? That the framework's goal, GDD objective is to uh, help teams to uh, face a new challenge, a, a new, uh, new ways of working adoption like DevOps, Scrum, Agile, whatever, right? A, a real business problem and help them to design a game, right? Which with these steps, so they can apply in this game as part of the daily work, right? That is the other framework. So we uh, the framework has nine steps. Uh, start with why is the number one? It's basically the purpose of the game, right? What is the, what is the problem and what is my why, right? What, what, why I'm going to do this, right? The, the, the problem basically, why? What is the value? What is the outcome of this? Number two, is that uh, to try to, um, if, if you have a kind of problem with your uh, development teams or something like that, it's quite important that you also need to first try to um, apply some game model-based system engineering, right? Uh, and basically this approach is try to, uh, uh, to review what you have in your architecture, in your code, in your, in your, um, in your software, so you can apply some good patterns of game model-based system engineering, right? This is part of the framework as well. Number three is uh, name your game, <laughs> okay? Put a name of your game, whatever name that you, that you think about it. Uh, number four is game brainstorming, which basically is work with your teams, right? To try to uh, share ideas about, okay, how we can gamify this, right? Uh, what is the approach there? It's a kind of a, 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 um, a kind of, uh, app game or a kind of web application game, or maybe this is a kind of uh, a different game, right? I share ideas about uh, ideas about how we can sort this problem out with some gamification. Number five is what we are going to do today. Uh, this framework has an, an asset, which is a gamification design canvas, which is a canvas that you can run with your teams. Um, and also, well, we are going to, I'm going to share with you the entire framework today, but we are going to run specifically, specifically the number five, right? Uh, gamification design canvas, okay? And number six is game rules. You need to define the rules of your game. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's part of the game, the rules, you know? The, and number seven is the storytelling part. You need to design your game, but also you need to apply some storytelling practices. Like uh, you need to have a kind of uh, begin situation, some kind of, uh, challenges in the middle, right? You need to have a kind of uh, enemy or something like a challenge that you need to face, something like that. And you know, you you need to you need a way to uh, get um, awards about it and so forth, right? Uh, use game game story patterns to design your game. Number eight is the game character canvas, which is basically a canvas where you can design your your main characters for the game. Imagine that if you are designing a game for developers. You need to design. You need to design. Okay, this my, my character is going to be a developer, but you need to prepare some characteristic of this developer. How how this developer is going to interact with the game, right? And so forth. It's part of the uh, character design of any game. And number nine is uh, the business part, right? Uh, because at the end, at the end, this this framework is going to propose you an an idea of game that, of course, you need to you need to use some resources to to, to to make it, make it, make it, make it them real, right? So more or less, you need to get some support from from budget or something like that. So the number, the step number nine is a game business model canvas, which is basically a business model canvas to support your game idea and to prepare your ideas to, to you know, to sell your idea to your managers, right? Uh, to get their support. Basically, that is the number nine. Okay, that is a framework in in, in just one minute. <laughs> Okay, uh, this is the, the number five, as I said, the gamification design canvas is a canvas, right? That, that you already know, right? Maybe I, I assume that you know, right? What is a canvas? Basically, it's a visual, a visual way to, to organize some ideas, right? In some kind of a process. So you can uh, make, make new, make an approach or make a strategy about some specific problem, right? In this case, the gamification design canvas is for game design, right? The, the, the result of this canvas is that you're going to have your game design approach, right? So you, you, you can see here different um, 
um, steps, different steps that we are going to check later. Because as I said, we are going to run the canvas as a, with a real example, right, with you, okay? But this is the idea, right? Uh, this is a part of the framework, the game gamification design canvas. Uh, this is an example. This is an example that I want to share with you of, of a real uh, game that was was built using the GDD, the game game driving uh, driving design framework. And in this game was this this game was made for a large enterprise, large telecom enterprise from US. I, I cannot say the name, <laughs> but it's a it's one of the large telecom companies on the world. And this game was called Game of Testing, right? Uh, game of Testing, um, that, 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 that was the name of the game. And basically this game is for, uh, is for foster uh, the adoption of new ways of working related to continuous testing in the EPSICOPS, right? That, that is the approach of this, in this game. What was the problem? The problem was that in this huge enterprise, they were facing uh, the DevOps adoption, you know, that, that the adoption of, uh, of DevOps practices. And as part of that challenge, they, they, they were having some problems with that continuous testing approach, right? Because they have some, we have, sorry, we have, we had some uh, problems with that because of the uh, skills of our, our testers, because of the culture, because of our team organization, because of our uh, tooling stuff and so forth, right? We had a lot of problems to adapt new ways of working for continuous testing, agile testing, right? So we create this game. So this game is a basic, it's a basically a kind of a kind of tournament, right? Which all the teams over the world, right? Team from Latin America, team from from Europe, from India, from US, they were part. They Play it in this tournament, which is which was the game of testing, and basically in this in this tournament, each team uh, had a chance to, depending of their level of maturity and depending of uh, how many automated tests they built, they coded, depending of the types of tests that they, they have, right? If they implemented functional tests, unit tests, interaction tests, security tests, performance tests, whatever, right? And they put it. They put them in the pipeline, running to check code, right, and help continuous delivery. Depending on that, right, each team uh, gets some points, you know, in the game. So what you can see here is the dashboard of the game. You can see here that we have the teams here. You know, uh, some teams, some points in the team. We have some levels. We have dragon levels. We have army levels. We have some release information, right? We have some uh, enablers of the game, continuous iteration, build breakers, and so forth. And basically, that is the idea, right? It's a kind of uh, that is this is the board game, which we share all the information about the results of the of the of the game, the teams that are getting points, the the best players, right? Um, as I said, you can in that game you can get points uh, adding more automated tests in the pipeline, right? So. It was a very success for us, you know, because people enjoy the game. People want to participate, want to share knowledge, want to try new ways of working with unit testing automated, functional testing, security, and so forth. And they were very excited to run those tests in the pipeline because that uh, helped them to make more points. And that was great. That improved quality and so forth. So yeah, that, that was the game of testing. It's, it was a really good approach, especially working for a large, large enterprise, you know? So yeah, that was that was okay, that was the foundation of the talk. So now now I'm uh, as I said I have a I have a, a a present I have a gift for you and this gift this basically this is uh the 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 Miro, right as I said um, this framework is free the game driving design is free all the information is in the internet actually uh, and actually I'm going to share with you the Miro. Um, I'm going to share with you the link right now in the chat okay. Uh, but anyway, you can you can take a screenshot of this of this um, of this screenshot of this uh, um, slide. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to share with you the Miro. I'm going to we are going to you go to the Miro right now. Okay, this is the Miro that basically this is the Miro that I have. And actually, as I said, this is the framework. <laughs> uh, this is the from you can you can you can find here the entire framework. I'm going to share with you the link anyway in the chat. Okay. This 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 uh, Miro is for you. So you are. I'm going to share with you this Miro. You you can use it. You can um, you can use it. It's for you um, in your work with your team with your mates. Um, so it's for you. Okay. I share with you the link 
okay, in a matter. So yeah, this is this is the, the GDD framework. Um, well, we have the team, right? We have Hulk, Spider-Man, and so forth. It's a, it's part of the fun, right? Um, and today we are going to we are going to go to the Spider-Man Spider-Man uh, section, right? I'm going to give you a, a quick overview about the framework, but um, it's going to be very quick. Okay. I'm going to share with, I'm going to um, use this option to bring everyone. To, please uh, join, please uh, enter to the, to the Miro, please. Uh, okay. Please enter to the Miro. Okay, I'm going to, oh, sorry. Okay, I'm going to do it again. Okay, I paste, I paste a link. Really, I, do, you, do you don't see it? Now it is, now it is. Okay, thank you, thank you. Oh, people! People is saying people is thinking that it they don't see it. I'll type it again. It's available okay. right now. Yeah. Okay. Copy paste. Okay, I think can now now is there. Now, yeah. Yeah, I, I can see it now. Okay, guys, please uh, uh join the the link. This is the Myro. Oh, you can't. No, it's Tell not. <laughs> No, people say that they, they can't. Oh. No, okay. Okay, no problem, no problem, guys, no problem. Um, uh, I think- uh, No, I have the host... can you see now again? I can see it, I can see it, I can see it. Yes, yeah, they can see it. Okay, now. great, great, <laughs> thank you guys, thank you. Please, please join, please join, okay. Again, guys, this this Myro is for you. is is your Myro, uh, this is the framework, it's open source. You can use it with your, with your team members. Uh, it's for you, right? It's for you. Okay, but I'm going to I'm going to just uh, I'm going to do a kind of overview of the framework very very fast because I want to focus on the step number five, right? Well, here you can see the entire information of the framework. Uh, you have some some uh, service here. You got some instruction on the framework. Uh, you have a part for. I'm going to maximize this. Sorry. You have some part for different. You know the the nine, remember the nine step the nine step that I shared with you. So basically the framework is there. So you are going to, you can find the nine steps, you know, with some activities for your team, right? Some fun activities to define your team, team name, you define your rules, get some information about what is gamification, what is the object of the framework, uh, some activities for, um, well, some, some uh, foundation about the, the, the main pillars of the framework. In this case, I use the Lean Startup methodology to, to build a framework. That is the idea, right? Try to experiment fast, you know? Uh, start with why, you know, uh, some kind of examples, define the problem, the, the business needs and so forth, right? Um, and, and then put the name of the game. Um, I have another step here. Um, yeah, here you can have some kind of uh, storytelling part, right? Design some characters of the, or your, of the game in this part, in this section. And um, yeah, you, you can design how many characters that you need in your game, basically. Uh, and then number five is the canvas. And we are going to run the canvas in some minutes, okay? This is the game design canvas. We are going to run it in some minutes, but this is part of the framework as well. Um, I, I, I leave you some extra canvas so you can, you can use it with your teams, right? If you want to. So you can design your own, your own game, right? Uh, and also you can have here your game rules. You have some uh, activities so you can define your game rules. Uh, here you can have some, some, some examples, some recommendations about it so you can do it with your team. Uh, here is the storytelling part as well, you know. Um, this, is a, this is a storytelling canvas so you can use it for, to create your storytelling for your game, right? These are some examples, some, some questions that you need to ask your your team about it so you can design your your story right um then you have this um the the the, the characters right um more more detail about it uh about your your main characters right yeah the heroes the billions and so forth and then you have this the game character canvas right as i said it's a canvas where we have some some characteristic of your 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 hero or your game or your player right and you need to describe your player, right? Uh, yeah, that, that is that is the idea. Um, and then number five, sorry. Uh, finally, and finally, you can you can see here 
the business model canvas, right? Uh, which is, the, as I said, right? As, as you know, a business model canvas is a kind of uh, a visual way to define what is the business case for your idea, right? For your proposal, for your product and so forth. In this case, I use this canvas to, to support the business idea, right? Of the game, right? Because at the end, I know that because I, it happened to me, right? That we need to present this idea to our managers more or less, you know, if, of course, if in the case that we need to some budget off, maybe if we want to apply this game for the entire company, right? That which was my case, right? We, we create a game of testing game, not only for a team, we create a game for the entire company. Uh, I'm talking about more than more than 1,000 1, people, right? More than more than 1,000 and more people, right? So with different countries. So it was very complicated. So uh, this is a kind of a way to support your, your game, you know, your strategy, right? The, the business model canvas. And here you, you, you can see an example of Pokemon Go, you know? The posits around the canvas in this part are actually the real posit for the business case for the business model case of Pokemon Go. So, so you can see here the information here, right? You can um, play with with this with this canvas to to define that as well. But this is the idea. Um, this is an example, and of course you can have this this uh, blank uh, canvas, so you can apply your your own approach, right? And at the end, at the end, basically, I share with you books, right? That I use for this approach, a lot of books. Uh, Action every gamification from Yukai Cho. I think this is the, the most important book in my in my in my experience. But of course, there are more, more books that you can you can check if you want to go deeply in gamification. And basically, I shared, I shared, sorry, I shared those books because of um um because those books help me to design this game, right? Game Storming, Disrupt You About Innovation, Innovation Games uh, by Luke Hoffman. It's a great book about games in serious business. Uh, How Your Brain Works is also another game and some resources right here, some resources, okay? Some links that you can use, okay? That, that, is, that is the framework is, I think it's, it's you know, I, I usually I run this framework with, with people in more or less three hours. <laughs> Because it's a kind of you know it's 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 a very uh, strong framework, but today with you right, I'm going to run this real example with you about step number five, which is a gamification design canvas. Okay, so we are going to run this this canvas using the game of testing, right? Just to remember, remember that in the game of testing approach, remember that the problem was okay. Uh, we are working in a large enterprise. Uh, we need to adapt new ways of working, especially continuous testing or agile testing ways of working, which demands, you know, changes in the behavior, in the culture, in the engineering practices, changes in different team members, right? Product owners, uh, uh, developers, testers, and so forth. They demand uh, to adapt new ways of working, new, new, new practices for like testing automation, for unit testing, for integration, and so forth, right? And some BDD practices, some test driving development practices and so forth, right? A lot of changes, right? If you want to adapt um, continuous testing or IEL testing, that was, that, was the, that was the business problem, right? In our case, that was the scenario, okay? So basically we designed this and we I'm going to share with you how we how we run this, this uh, canvas to, uh, to face that problem and to design our game, right? Okay, number one, approach number one is, uh, step number one is team name, right? So your team name. <laughs> in our case, our team name was, uh, sorry, it was, um, sorry, was, wait, one second, okay, was the pro, right? That was, that was our name. You can, you can put your name, whatever your name is, right? Uh, the the spider man or the Magnific Team or the, you know, whatever, right? The coders, the testers and so forth, right? In our case, our team name was the pro. The second step is the problem, right? Uh, so you need to define your problem, your why, right? What is the business problem that you want to sort out, you want to fix with this approach, right? This is quite important, the why, right? So uh, in this case, we have a lot of problems. For example, one problem was fake positive in automated test results in the pipeline. So we we actually, we coded a lot of, a lot of tests, but unfortunately those tests uh, gave us fake positive when we run the, the test in the pipeline. So we had problems with our test actually. So that was part of the game, the problem of the game. Also another problem was lack of test coverage. Yes, we have a lot of, we have 0% of test coverage 
in unit testing, for example, right? This was a huge problem. Another problem that we want to sort out with this game was to, oh, sorry, this is repeated. But basically, well, uh, we have more problems, but uh, basically those problems were some of them, right? Fake positive uh, while we run automatities in the pipeline, you know, and also lack of test coverage, right? 0% uh, of test coverage in some regression scenarios, in integration scenarios, so our coverage was ridiculous. <laughs> So it, it well, so it it caused a lot of a lot of issues, right? In our in our uh, in our products. So that was the situation. Okay, number three. Okay, uh, step number three: game name. So in this in this approach, you can use a kind of brainstorming, right? To try to okay, uh, guys, let's let's think in a, in a funny name, right? For for this game, right? Whatever, right? Uh, you know, actually in the market, you have funny name, right? Donkey Donkey Kong name. Donkey Kong is a a very uh, famous game, right? From Super, from Super Nintendo, I think. And the, the name is, is funny, right? Donkey Kong, right? <laughs> uh, and a lot, a lot of names, right? Resident Evil, uh, I don't know. Um, uh, Le 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 Legend of Dragons and so forth, right? In our case, we, we share a lot of ideas at that time. And I remember that in that time, the Game of Thrones series was very popular popular at that time, the Game of Thrones series. So that is why we say, hey, why not Game of Testing? Instead of Game of Thrones, you know, Game of Testing. So the name was nice, was cool. We liked the name. So we decided, okay, the game is going to call Game of Testing, right? Because at the end, we are uh, developers, we are testers. We want to play with a game in some way. We didn't know at that time what the game would be, but we say, hey, Game of Testing is good, right? AK got. Um, by the way, uh, Adidas, the, the, the Adidas, the, the, the sport company from Germany, they had, they, they also, they, they also have, a, they also have a game similar to this, which is the game of technical depth. <laughs> it's, it's the same idea, right? Game of testing, game of technical depth. You know, if you want to see more about it, you can check internet. The game is, is, is on internet, right? From Adidas. Okay, uh, that's number three. Number four is the objective, right? The objectives. So in our case, in our case, uh, those were our objectives. Game of testing. Game of testing aims to build people with working. That was our first approach. You know, continuous testing. Second goal was game of testing looks for make continuous testing fun. You know, uh, a theory of fun. Uh, so we can make enjoyable and engageable work, right? That was our our approach. And our third approach or objective or purpose of the game was game of testing looks for improved software quality through make continuous testing robust in the pipeline. Okay, that, those were our goals, right? Quality, robust tests, improve the ways of working, people, people have fun and so forth. That was our approach. Number four, you know, uh, that was quite important because those are our drivers, right? The strategy. Uh, number five is uh, game. Sorry, it's about the game levels, player levels. Remember that I shared with you this. This sorry, I'm going to share with you very quickly. Yes, in in the game of testing, we have levels, right? Dragons, which are the best players, the best teams, and we have another levels, right? Depending of the maturity and depending of the points in the game, you have some some levels, right? The same here, right? We need to define the levels. So, for example, we define three levels. We define the chickens, which basically are the beginners, right? The beginners of the game. They are going to have between zero and, 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 and 1,000 1, points. We have the lion level, right? Which are the intermediate players, the, uh, players which are which they have between 1,000 and 6,000 points. And we have the, you know, the masters or the, of the game, right? The dragons. Uh, the dragons have advanced level, you know, and they have more than 6,000 points, okay? That was the levels. And of course, we changed the levels while we develop new features of the game and why we improve the game, right? Remember that, as I said at the beginning, as part of this framework, we use that Lean Startup uh, methodology, right? And so we apply, we, we apply this kind of uh, round, uh, this kind of approach that is code fast, right? Put it in production, get feedback, experiment, and then code again, right? Depending on the feedback, you, you, you apply, we apply this approach, right? Okay, that, that was number five. Um, Number six is this part, is how you get points and what's for, right? How you get points in a game. As I said, uh, we, we get points uh, with automated integration tests. Uh, we get points 
with automated unit tests. We get points with automated region tests. We get points finding finding real bugs. You know, if if we run the, the the test in the pipeline and those tests instead of instead of instead of fake uh, positives, <laughs> they the test real found bugs. We, we uh, the player and the team got some points. And also we we get points keeping our test in a good shape, right? In a good shape, running green, running continuously in the pipeline, right? So of course, depending of the test and the complexity of the code, you get more points than than you get more points, right? So for example, unit tests give you some points, and of course, uh, integration tests give you different points. You know, each 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 type of testing type of automated tests have different uh, weight weights for the points, right? And also, I guess, you. I guess I yes. to interrupt. Uh, time five more minutes. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And and finally, uh, well, uh, break builds, right? Also, you 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 miss some points breaking builds. Okay, number seven, very quickly, uh, is about visualization. It's about how you how you're going to present your results, right? I I I share with you an example, but basically, we create this game of testing web, uh, board web for the game, right? It's a, it's a board web. We create some rankings for the players. We create some metrics per release, right? To present in, in the board, rankings and metrics per release. And also we create this uh, player of the month, right? Which is a recognition, right? For the best players. And finally, game surprises. You know, each game needs to be so, some surprises for the team members. So we prepare some awards for them. For example, town hall mentions. So in some, mention, in some meetings with upper managers, the managers present, hey, we are going to, we want, we want to co congratulate this team because they are doing great in the game of testing, for example, right? And also some videos that we we upload in the in the pages of the company, so you can present your team about the game, and and we can uh, give you thank you for your your performance in the game. Tester season, some some specific season for some security testing or some 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 specific testing that people enjoy more. And finally, some special points for rocking players, right? For the players that are sharing knowledge, that they are doing their best. Okay, guys. So this is basically this was the gamification canvas. And just to finish at the end, right? I, I hope you you can enjoy this this talk. Just to finish, I'm going to go here. This part. Yes, my final message that I I always use. <laughs> this message is: please remember that everybody have dreams. You have dreams. I have dreams. So please help and share more. That is quite important. That is why I'm here. Share more, remember that. And thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Argil. Um, it was an excellent session.